the whole point of this video is that a lot of these young men don't realize how they pack in a month. Um, they don't realize how they getting packed up. Um, they're using these indictments. They're getting them up out of here. You know, um, and it's sad because a lot of times when you grow up in the hood, like young men view going to jail. They view going to jail as a ways of passage to becoming a man. Um, and I say that all the time. Going to jail. Um, I say that all the time, right? Hold on, let me let me give you a badge, bro. Um so they, they you know a lot of times so what i was saying in the other video is that a lot of times that's how you become a man in the hood right like part of becoming a man in the hood is like um part of part of becoming a man in the hood is like you know you grow up you live in communities where where people you either the the hunter or you're the hunted you know that's just how shit go like because we live in these messed up communities and I think like I was given a story like when I moved, you know, when I moved from wherever I moved, you know, I was in the shelter system at one point. And then I went from the shelter system to the projects. I didn't always grow up in a, uh, I didn't always grow up in the projects. You feel me? Um, and um, so I, I, so from the shelter system, nah, nah, they, 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 um, what they did was they ended my video because I had, it had the guns in it. So I went from, for example, a lot of people, when they can't get housing, they go, a lot of people get housing through the shelter or some type of section A or whatever, right? But a lot of times those communities that they put you in is not the best communities, right? It's not the best communities to raise kids in. It's not the best communities to, for your children to thrive in, right? They don't have the best schools. They don't have the best anything, right? So picture this. Let me just paint a picture for y'all, for the people who don't understand, who don't get it, right? Picture you moving into the projects or, or moving into a crazy neighborhood with a because it's usually crime ridden. It's, it's usually somewhere like Brownsville, East New York, South Bronx, you know, Jamaica, Queens. Like they just they just be putting people in the worst of the worst neighborhoods. Right. Especially if you can't afford to live anywhere else. Um, you know. Um, you know what I'm saying? So. So when you think about this, right, when you think about boom, you move into the projects, your projects is usually controlled by a certain gang, right? They're controlled by somebody. Um, when you move there, you're the new guy. So people are always pressing you when you're the new guy. When you first move to a neighborhood, it never fails, right? If you're a chick moving into a new block, everybody's trying to smash that chick first. Everybody wants to be the first guy who sleeps with that girl when, when they first move into the projects. And if you're a dude, they either want to jump you, beat you up, or recruit you into their gang. This is just the culture of what goes on when you first move into some of these housing developments, mostly housing developments, right? Or when you move into the hood. When you move into one of them little low-key buildings and back blocks and all of that shit, it'd be a little different. But when you move into concentrated, connected buildings, when you move into projects, that's usually what happens, right? If you're a girl, they're trying to race. Dudes are trying to race with each other to who going to smash that girl first. And if you're a dude, they trying to recruit you or extort you and beat you up, right? So when you're a young boy growing up, trying to about to become a man, and your parents are telling you shit like, don't let nobody take your shit. Don't let nobody violate you. Don't let nobody disrespect you. I've seen parents, I've seen kids come home and tell their parents that somebody took their stuff or somebody violated them. And their parents will say shit like, "You better go out there and get your shit." I seen, I seen mothers, I seen mothers, single mothers, tell that to their kids because they don't want to raise no punk, right? This is the ideology. A mom says to herself, "I can't raise no punk. I don't have no man to teach him how to be a man, so I gotta teach him how to be a man." And sometimes our mothers overly, you know, they, you know, they gotta be masculine too, and they tell us, "Go get your shit, for I beat you up." Or for I spank you, or for I give you something to cry about. So that is gets instilled in the mind of that young boy. I can't come home and tell my mom certain shit. I can't come home and tell my parents that somebody's picking on me. Especially if you don't got no siblings. I can't come home and do that. So a lot of times, this is in the back of these kids' mind. I can't come home. So you become vicious. Some a lot of times you be you either become vicious or you fold. You either, if you're, some parents don't say that to their kids. Some parents, 
they just be like, it's okay, honey, whatever. So those kids, sometimes they continue to get their shit taken. They continue to get violated. They continue. So, but then there's a lot of dudes who feel like, nah, I'm going to fight for my shit. So you go from fighting for your shit. Now, at some point, you might like fighting. You might like the rush that you get from beating people up. You know, and sometimes you, you, you know, if you're the best one with the, with the, with the hands, sometimes you just get recruited into a gang. So what I'm just trying to say is that like growing up in the hood, man, is, is a, like, like this brother said is a cycle. You know what I'm saying? This shit is a cycle. And it's like, it just gets passed down. That's why I don't respect older men who went through it. I don't respect the man who is 30, 40, 50, and you out here still screaming some gang and you out here still trying to put these kids on, especially after you know. That ain't shit in here for them. Especially after you know that you got two felonies, you got three felonies, you fucked up your life, you crashing from couch to couch, you living off your baby mamas. You know you a bum, homie. The least you could do as a bum is try to tell the young kids to, to not follow in your footsteps. That's the least thing you could do. The least thing you could do is tell a young man, come on, bro. Like, yo, look at me, bro. I'm fucked up. I'm messed up. You know, I remember this old time said that shit to me when I was going to trial. He was like, yo, bro, if you did it, he was like, yo, just take the time, bro. He said, if you did it, just take the time, go upstate. He said, don't play with these people, especially if you know you did it. He said, look at me. He said, he said, I play with them. This is what he said to me. He said, look, I play with these people, try to beat them, knowing that I did the crime. He said, bro, they gave me 25 to life. He said, it gave me 25 to life. He was like, look at me. I'm messed up. I'm in a cane. I went blind in one eye. He said, bro, I don't want this to be you. He literally was trying to give me advice. And you know what? I ain't listen to him. I'm like, I ain't listen to this dude. Bugging. I mean, I still copped out. I still took time. I kind of listened, but I really didn't listen. You know, so so the whole point of this video and, and the title, make sure you like the video so it can circulate. It was just me trying to say that there's some type of um, glorifying that goes on in the hood when it comes to jail. I was there. I was one of them young boys that I told my homeboys i told the homies before I, a week before I, I got locked up i kid you not i had a meeting and i told them i'm gonna go to jail for this shit. that's literally what i told them out of my mouth i was not that i was looking forward to it but i, I spoke that shit into existence i literally told them i'm gonna go to jail for this shit, and i ain't scared to go to jail for this shit. and i was you know i was trying to amp them up and and you know as they as somebody that was leading them and they looked up to and they really and i really ended up going to jail so I could see, I understand when young boys in the hood and they talk about like, I can't wait till I get to the island. I can't like, like I used to work in a juvenile facility and some of these dudes didn't want to be in the juvenile facility no more because they thought it was kitty jail. Even though people protested, even though people protested in New York City to raise the age, right? Because they didn't want these young boys at 16 years old being mixed up with adults these kids working in the juvenile facility, these kids are sitting there talking about, I want to go to the island because this is kitty jail. These, this is what these, these young boys are saying. They said, this is kitty jail. I don't want to be here. I want to go to the island. I want to go bang out. I want to go get my stripes. I want to go get my name up. And I'm just looking at them like, wow, I don't judge them because that was me too. I was stupid when I was young. This is why I don't judge the people that show the guns in the video because social media has become a little crazier now. I feel like if maybe social media was crazy when we was coming up, we probably would have did the same dumb shit. Um, like I said, you know, like, like, like I said in my other video, before I went to my trial proceedings, be, when I first got locked up, I was on the phone talking in crypt codes, telling my man to get rid of the gun that I used in my crime. I was like on the phone talking to this dude like, yo, I'm using gang code. I'm thinking I'm slick. I'm thinking they're they not going to catch me. They don't know what I'm doing. Mind you, when you get on the phone, the phone tells you this call may be recorded or monitored. Y'all know, for those of y'all who've been locked up, the phone tells you that they are recording and they are monitoring your phone call. But you know what? I didn't care. I was stupid. I didn't care. I ain't listen. I'm hearing the phone tell me it's being recorded and monitored. And you know what? Me thinking I'm slick, me thinking I'm smarter. I'm sitting on the phone talking in crypt codes, thinking that I'm getting away with some shit. When in reality, when I went to my trial proceedings and the district attorney has to present, because they got to tell you what they're going to present at trial. You know what they did? They presented two of my phone calls. They, present, they presented two of my phone calls. They played them in court and they had me talking on the phone and I'm just sitting there 
This is two, almost three years later. Because I was fighting my case for two years and a half. This is 30, I fought my case for 33 months on Rikers Island. This is 33 months after I first got locked up. They're playing a phone call from two years ago of me in the courthouse for the judge. And it's me telling my men to get rid of the gun. And, I, and because I was talking to crypt codes, the judge was kind of like, well, what is he saying? The judge didn't really understand. The judge didn't really understand what I was saying. So the DA said, your honor, he's talking in crypt codes. He's talking in gang codes. And we're going to have a gang expert, a gang intelligence guy come in here and interpret what he is saying. And they, the DA was telling the judge, you see right here when he mentioned this, he's talking about the firearm that he used in this case. Like, it was crazy. I'm on the phone. I'm on the phone telling all my mans. I'm on the phone telling all my mans, yo, make sure y'all pull up to my trial. Make sure y'all come to my court date. I'm telling them all of this on the phone. I'm sending the paperwork out. The DA got their hands on the paperwork. This is how much you can't even trust dudes. Make sure y'all like the button. I mean, <laughs> y'all like the button. Make sure y'all press the like button, please, so it can circulate. Not for me. Make sure y'all like it so it can circulate. Because this is real shit that a lot of people don't hear. You can't even trust people. And mind you, I got locked up in 2010. When snitching was, was just becoming a thing, right? Like, I'm not saying people just started snitching, but it just started becoming a thing where people wasn't really killing snitches, right? So now it was way worse. But this is this was early on. 2010 was the year of the snitches, right? It was the year when mad people started snitching. Nothing was happening to them, you know, and, and shit just changed, right? Um, early 2000s, people, shit was still happening to people that told, right? But anyway, I sent out the paperwork of dude telling on me. Who, somebody that I gave that paperwork to gave the paperwork to the dude that told on me, and he gave it to the DA. This is how conniving these motherfuckers is, B. Excuse my language, man. You know, I'm just, just thinking about that shit, man. This is the crazy shit. You know what I'm saying? This is how crazy these dudes is. You know, gang, 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 right? You think they gang, gang? You think they gang, gang? You're giving the gang, gang the paperwork so that they, so that this person could be exposed, right? How, you, how it's supposed to be. So that this person could be exposed. And you know what they did? People were signing with the rat. They gave him the paperwork. He gave that. He's already a witness against me. He gave the paperwork to the DA. The DA now that's like tampering with a witness because now I'm trying to get him hurt. I'm trying to get him clapped. I'm trying to get him whatever silenced. I'm trying to get him silenced. Excuse me. I'm trying to get him silenced. I'm tampering with a witness. That that could be that's another charge. So so sometimes, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes you you think this you think some people got your best interest. They don't care, bro. You hear the dude say that shit all the time. He ain't snitch on me. And they go about their business, bro. Mind you, me, I did everything I ever did was for the gang, homie. Everything I ever did was for Crip. Everything I did. That's why this just that's why this shit in that moment when this shit happened and they turned their back on me. That's why that shit hurt so much. But a lot of dudes not gonna talk about it. That shit just made me realize shit. It just made me realize, man. This shit not what it is, man. They lied to you. They lied to you, bro. They lied to you. I gave up my life, I gave up my youthful years. I did seven off of 18. From 18, I missed out everything. I didn't graduate high school. You know what I'm saying? I didn't go on dates. I didn't go to no prom. You know what I'm saying? I didn't make the little small mistakes in the street that you usually make at that age. You know what I'm saying? And then get it together later on. I didn't do none of that. I was sitting in a jail cell for, for the gang, for the gang gang. Because I wanted to hold it down for the gang. Because I wanted, I wanted the badge of honor. I wanted the badge of honor. I'm telling you, man, that shit ain't, that shit is not it. Shit is not it. But I don't, at the end of the day, people told me that too when I was young. And I had to hold it down. I had to learn for myself so I get it. That's why I say that about these young dudes. That's why I say that about these young dudes. They're going to have to learn their own lesson because I had to learn my own lesson. I went to anti gang rallies. I didn't listen. You think I cared that somebody was talking about? People got this much time. I'm thinking I'm slick. I'm thinking about, man, I'm going to get away from that. I'm going to get away with that shit. I ain't dumb. They dumb. That's how I was thinking. That's how a lot of these young dudes are thinking. They thinking they not going to follow in the same footsteps of the older generation because they are smarter. Every generation think they smarter than the last generation. Just like the last generation think they smarter than the younger generation. 
and they was all they was all doing the same shit. The older generation be talking shit about the young dudes getting on drugs, sipping syrup, and 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 popping pills. But the old heads used to smoke crack. They used to snort coke. They used to smoke PCP. They used to do the same shit. It's just different drugs. That's all it is. Y'all did the same shit. So why sit here? Why sit here and talk shit to the young? Why sit here and talk down on them? Why sit here and call the youngins dumb when y'all did the same shit? You're not.